Hey guys, this is a video in my MATLAB tutorial series. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to store values from all the iterations of a for loop in a single array. The previous video was an introduction to using for loops and plotting in for loops. So if you need a refresher on the essentials of for loops, that video will be linked in the description below. In this video, I'm going to focus on pre-allocation to store the results from all iterations of a for loop in a single array. Without further ado, let's get to it. Last time, I mentioned that when you use a for loop, the only values stored in the workspace are the values from the last iteration. For example, let's create a very simple for loop. First, let's write clear here uh, to get rid of anything in the workspace and CLC to get rid of anything in the command window. Then I'm going to create uh, a vector that I'm going to assign uh, the variable name x to. x equals lint space 0, 10, 11. And I'm going to suppress this with a semicolon. So what this is doing, it's going to cre uh, create a linearly spaced vector that goes from 0 to 10 and consists of 11 elements. So effectively, the increment will be by 1. So let's go ahead and run this to make sure that uh, the vector x comes out looking the way we want it to. And if we click on it in the workspace, we will be able to see it. And sure enough, it starts at 0, ends at 10, and has 11 elements. So the increment is by 1. So let's close out of this. Even though we already know that the number of elements is 11, I'm going to still use the length command to set the variable equal to the length of the vector. So I'll say n equals length of x. This is to ensure that the subsequent portion of the code won't change in the event that I decide to change the number of elements in the x vector. The length command returns the largest array dimension. Since x is a 1 by 11 vector, the length of x will be 11. We're going to create a for loop that goes through n iterations. Uh, let's write out the code and then discuss what's going on. The for loop is going to look as follows. First, we are telling MATLAB to start the for loop by typing in for. Then i is the variable name assigned to the loop index vector. The loop index is going from 1 to n, and n in this case is 11. Remember that the loop index uh, cannot be less than 1, and it must be positive integers. We can uh, quickly take a look at what a 1 by 11 vector would look like. But a slight problem here is n is not already saved anywhere, so uh, MATLAB won't know what n is. So we can just type in 11 here to check what the vector looks like. And sure enough, we get a vector that goes from 1 to 11. And since we haven't specified an increment, oh, and we're using the colon operator, the default uh, increment is 1. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Okay, and then what we're saying is we're going to take the ith element of the x vector and multiply that by 3, and that's going to equal y. So for the first iteration, i equals 1. So we're going to take the first element in the x vector, which is 0, and we're going to multiply that by 3. So y after the first pass will equal zero. Y after the second pass or iteration will equal three times the second element of x, which will be one, and so on until we get to the very last iteration. So when i equals n or 11, we'll have the 11th element in the x vector be 10. So that value will be 10 times three, and that will equal y. 
So let's go ahead and run this code. And before running it, remember to save it. I have saved it as a pre allocation underscore four underscore loop. Uh, you can either click this to run or press control enter. And once we run it, we see that in the workspace, the only value stored is 30, which is the value from the last iteration of the for loop. If we even click on it, we see that 30 is the only value. And the semicolon suppresses uh, anything from appearing in the command window for these uh, iterations. If I get rid of the semicolon and run the uh, script again, I can visually see in the command window what MATLAB is doing after each uh, pass or iteration, but that's not always useful. And if you have a very large vector, this might not be useful at all. So you might want to store it in uh, an array as an output. The first thing we can try is to write uh, y of i. Let's see what happens now. Let's run the script. Notice that in the workspace, I have a vector now that has the dimension 1 by 11. And if I click on it, I can see the value after each iteration. After the first iteration, y equals 0. After the second iteration, y equals 3. And after the fourth iteration, uh, y equals 9, uh, and so on. So let's close out of this. There is, however, an inefficiency with this method. The scroll bar has turned yellow, which means that MATLAB has found some sort of warning. And if you hover over uh, this yellow right here, that's next to the code from the for loop, we see that MATLAB gives us some warnings. Uh, the first one is the variable y appears to change size on every loop iteration within a script. Consider pre-allocating for speed. And the next one is terminate a statement with semicolon to suppress output. I've uh, intentionally left out the semicolon so we can visualize in the command window what's going on. So we don't need to worry about that. But the first one is what we're concerned about. Now, why does it say that the variable y appears to change size? Let's take a look at the command window to understand what's going on. So let's make this a little bit bigger and let's scroll up. So the dimension of y after the first uh, pass is one because it only needs to store the value from iteration one and that value is zero. After the second iteration, however, MATLAB needs to store the value from the first iteration as well as the value from the second iteration. So this is a one by two vector. And then after the third iteration, MATLAB needs to store uh, the first uh, two iteration values as well as the new val value from the third iteration. So the uh, vector is getting larger in dimension until it finally gets to uh, a 1 by 11 vector. In this simple case, there is no problem with the execution of the code leaving it as is, but it's a good opportunity to demonstrate the concept of pre-allocation, which we can apply to longer and more complex codes. What we're going to do is create an array. In this case, we need a simple 1 by 11 vector that has the dimension we need for the output vector. So before the for loop, we'll create an array of uh, zeros. Uh, so let's make this command window a little bit smaller. So we'll move this for loop down a little bit. And here we're going to say y equals zero, uh, zeros one comma n. So what we're doing is we're assigning uh, the array name to be y, in this case it's a vector, it's a 1 by 11 vector, and this y, th these names match. So after each iteration, MATLAB is going to replace values in this zeros array. So I'm going to include a three second pause after each iteration and still leave out the semicolons from the code so we can visualize uh, the zeros being replaced from the pre-allocated vector. 
So let's have a three second pause here. Pa uh, pause three. So and then let's run uh, the script. So keep an eye on the command window. So let's clear this before we start. So let's keep an eye on the command window and take a look at what's going on. Let's make this a little bit bigger. Ready? Let's do it. Keep an eye on the very bottom uh, vector. What's, what's going on? That's the most recent one after MATLAB is going through each iteration. Now let's scroll through the command window to fully understand what's what's been going on. So let's make this a little bit bigger again. So we started off with y being pre-allocated as a one by 11 vector consisting of zeros. After the first pass, the first index value, the first location was replaced with the output value of y, which was another zero. But in the second pass of the for loop, the second location was replaced with the three, which was the output of the second iteration of the for loop. And after the third iteration, the first two values were kept. But in addition to that, uh, the third value and the zeros array was replaced with a six. Similarly, after the fourth pass, the first three values were kept and the fourth value in the zeros array was replaced with a nine. And that uh, same process was repeated until we got to a 1 by 11 array where all of the values were now the outputs of each iteration of the for loop respectively. Now what would have happened if I had said y equals zeros of n comma 1 instead of 1 comma n? So let's change this up a little bit uh, and let's run it and see what happens. I should probably get rid of the pause. Uh, probably can also suppress this with a semicolon. Suppress this with a semicolon. Uh, and once we suppress these with semicolons, you see that this is green, which means MATLAB hasn't been able to find any warnings, which is good. So let's uh, get rid of uh, anything here and let's run this again. All right. So this time, Notice what's happened when I do zeros uh, as a dimension n comma one. When I open this up, it's a column vector. Remember that uh, when we give dimensions for a, for an array or a matrix, it's rows by columns. So we're telling MATLAB that this zeros array needs to have uh, eleven rows and one column, and that's exactly what MATLAB. Uh, creates. Uh, and previously we had said we need one row and 11 columns. So just uh, be careful of what you're telling MATLAB to do and what you intend for it to um, do. On the other hand, if we had just said it's zeros, uh, parentheses, uh, n, uh, since one of the dimensions is one, you might be inclined to write it this way, but let's see what actually happens when you do it this way. Let's open it up. And you see it's a 11 by 11 uh, array. So when you don't give two dimensions, you just give a single dimension for the array. MATLAB assumes that it's a square array or matrix, and it creates a square uh, array to store your values. and uh, unless that's what you intend for it to do, just uh, be careful of that. Let's change this back to uh, 1, comma, n. Uh, also, you need to remember this y, all parentheses, uh, i. Let's see what happens when we forget to include the loop index after the y in parentheses. So if we take this out, let's run it. Oh, let's take the, oh, let's run it. And notice what happens. Only the last value from the last iteration, only the value from the last iteration is stored in the workspace like before. 
So you need to tell MATLAB to replace the values in this um, zeros vector with uh, with the values from the for loop iteration. So you need to include this loop index parentheses after after the variable name. That's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to see a continuation of pre-allocation, but with the dot operator, that would be when you have two variables that are changing, or every iteration of the for loop will set one of the variables to be a fixed number for that iteration, while the other variable goes through uh, a wide range of values. The results will be stored in a matrix that has been pre-allocated. It will probably be easier when we actually take a look at it. I hope this video has been helpful in some way. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Check out other videos on my channel, especially the MATLAB tutorial series, as well as the graphing and scientific calculator tutorial series. Also check out the math videos on my channel. Until next time, take care guys.